My name is Eric Smith, and this is an excerpt from my pet project, Stories from Cuville. Cosmo Folly chartered a flight to JFK Airport the next day. He planned to go back to the orphanage in Harlem to learn everything he could about Jack McAllister. The orphanage's matron, Mrs. Palmer, sat down with Cosmo when he arrived. They went through Jack's paperwork while Mrs. Palmer confided all her knowledge of the young wizard, though of course she wasn't aware that he was a wizard. He arrived here when he was a little baby. Scary infant he was, too. Little pale baby with those eyes. I took him in after his parents died in an apartment fire, she explained. Odd thing it was. He was found on the sidewalk outside the building. Thirteen people died and four dogs. Nobody knew how Jack ended up out front. Has he been here ever since, Cosmo asked. No, Mrs. Palmer had a grave expression. Jack McAllister has had three foster families before you took him to your country. Most parents overlook Jack on appearance alone. He scares everybody. He frightens me, that is for sure, Cosmo muttered. Mrs. Palmer laughed. I admit that when you said you were taking the boys, I was happy to see that scary little boy leave, she went on. His first foster family were Mr. and Mrs. Johnson, a young black couple who had recently learned that they were barren. They gave Jack a chance. What happened? Cosmo asked. Three months after he went with the Johnsons, they died in a car crash. Jack was untouched, but the Johnsons had both been decapitated. It was truly tragic, but nobody assumed that the four-year-old had any involvement. Of course, Cosmo said, how could he have? That is what I thought, too, Mrs. Palmer said. Before Jack went to his second foster home, he made a friend in Carlos Rosa, a young boy whose father was in Mexico and his mother had been stabbed to death in prison. Carlos was impressionable, and the smart seven-year-old Jack was a beacon of inspiration for his new friend. He had taken a field trip with the orphanage to Central Park, and the pair of them ran off. When they were found, Jack had convinced Carlos to jump into the lion exhibit at the zoo. Oh my, Cosmo gasped. We couldn't save Carlos. He died trying to pet a lion cub. Mama was nearby and killed the six-year-old quickly. Mrs. Palmer had to pat her eyes with a Kleenex at this point. I'm sorry. He does seem to have quite the influence over people, Cosmo said. Yeah, Mrs. Palmer agreed. A year later, Florence Abernathy took foster care of Jack. She was rich, and Jack lived with her for two years before she died. Her murder was blamed on her housemaid, but I swear that boy did it. I never had proof, but he scares the hell out of me. I have to tell you that he may have murdered more people, Cosmo explained. His adoptive parents were found mutilated in their family's home. Jack is the main suspect. So he is a murderer. Mrs. Palmer cried. Oh my Jesus. He said that he had three foster homes, Cosmo remembered. What about the third one? A priest took him in when he was ten years old, Mrs. Palmer said. It turned out that he wasn't a good Christian man. What do you mean, Cosmo asked. The priest touched little Jack inappropriately, Mrs. Palmer said sadly. Jack ripped off the man's penis. I held no contempt for Jack for his action there. He was acting in acceptable self-defense. What happened to the priest, Cosmo asked after a moment. He was beaten to death in prison after being defrocked and anally assaulted. Mrs. Palmer smirked. Well handled, Cosmo said, so the church fired him. Oh, yeah. Did Jack make any other friends? Cosmo asked. And how did he become friends with Roy Boy and Deshaun? He did, Mrs. Palmer said. He became friends with a pale girl named Emily. She was 13, and he was 10, and just returned from the priest's house. Emily got adopted earlier this year. And the boys? Cosmo prodded.
Roy Boy had arrived about a year ago, Mrs. Palmer explained. He was such a weird boy. I wondered if he was even a human sometimes. Um, Cosmo stuttered, well, what do you m mean? Well, for starters, the purple eyes, Mrs. Palmer replied. I have never seen anyone with eyes like his. Even Jack's eyes aren't like Roy Boy's. They are very nice eyes, Cosmo said airily. He also seems telepathic, Mrs. Palmer said quietly. I've seen things move around him. When he thought he was alone, or just with Deshaun, Emily, and Jack, they were all a little freakish, to be honest. Oh? Cosmo decided to be honest and modify her memory later. How so? They all seem to be able to communicate without talking, Mrs. Palmer said. I know it sounds crazy, but I think they're all witches or aliens. Mrs. Palmer, that doesn't sound crazy at all. Cosmo pulled out his wand from his pocket and pointed it at the door to make it soundproof. I'm a wizard, Mrs. Palmer. So is Jack and Deshaun. I believe that Emily may have been a witch, by the sounds of it. Roy Boy is an extraterrestrial. Really? Mrs. Palmer exclaimed. Then she swore. Yes, ma'am, Cosmo explained. He then waved his wand and a tray appeared, laden with a decanter of alcohol and two glasses. Mrs. Palmer screamed. Please don't do that, Cosmo said. It's quite rude. I'm sorry, Mrs. Palmer said, covering her mouth. It's quite all right, Cosmo said. It seems, however, that Jack McAllister has a wand now. He has murdered again and may continue in my absence. What can I do, Mrs. Palmer asked. Is there anything else that I should know about Jack? Cosmo said clearly. Mrs. Palmer thought for a few seconds and then said, Yes. She went on. He was about five years old when we went to the zoo in New Jersey. The animals either fled to the other ends of their enclosures or walked right up to Jack. It was quite crazy. Janet and I started betting on each animal what they would do. That's incredible, Cosmo said. This wasn't unheard of, but it was rather rare. You never told me about Deshaun. Deshaun had lived in the neighborhood, Mrs. Palmer responded. He and Jack had been friends since they were about seven years old. Deshaun's grandmother lived around the corner from this orphanage. They seemed to be quite the pair. Went everywhere together. Should I be worried about Deshaun? Cosmo asked. I'd keep an eye on him, Mrs. Palmer said. I think Deshaun will choose good over evil eventually, though. What about Roy Boy? Cosmo asked. He is with his species, but wouldn't have any issue contacting Jack, and may not have the same values as his kinfolk. I never could get a reading of Roy Boy, Mrs. Palmer said thoughtfully. He may go either way.